Welcome to Session Sunday. Hi guys, it's Jack Edwards and in today's video we're going to be focusing on some attacking drills. But before we get into this week's video, make sure to leave us a like and subscribe and if you missed last week's video, click on the link above. Okay, so moving into the first part of this week's session, we're going to be focusing on a uh, pattern of play, okay, which is going to be focusing on our finishing. Now, before we get into it, let's have a look at how many players we're working with this week and the equipment that we'll be using. Now, in terms of outfield players this week, we're going to have 10 outfield players, okay, and then a goalkeeper, but we can adapt this for more players as well. In terms of the equipment, we're going to be focusing on using balls, bibs and cones, and then in this area here, you can try and get poles or mannequins to use, okay, to reenact like having defenders in there as well. Now, in terms of the setup for this part of the session, from the goalkeeper here, to this player here is going to be between 20 and 25 yards so you can adapt this okay depending on how much space you have so you want to try and use 25 but if you don't okay you can just use 20 and then this player here is going to be five yards further back again so that's 30 yards and then these players here okay will be a further 10 yards back as well so you're going about <clears throat> 40 yards of depth and then the width you just want the wide players here <clears throat> to be just outside the box, okay? So ideally, you wanna be getting around 50 yards minimum, okay? Just maximize the width as much as you can. Now, the strikers and the wide players in here, okay, playing like the inside forwards, they all start in this like this triangle formation. Now, the player here will always start with the two balls. And it's just gonna be two finishes, two times round. So this player will have two balls, this player will have two balls. Now, what it's gonna, how it's gonna start is, this player is gonna receive the ball. Okay, this kind of play is going to make the run. So it's like at first they can pretend to come in short, okay, and then as this player drops in, they spin off, okay, they look to receive it, set it in, this player goes in to finish. As soon as that's over, okay, the player will then receive the ball again, okay, but this player is going to um, bounce with this player now. So it's going to get played into this player here, who sets it here, gets set back. And then we're looking for the wide player to get on the run. And then we're getting into here. And then we look to attack the box as a three. So you get this player can obviously try and attack the back post. And then you get these two players, one attacking the front, one attacking the middle. Or this player might come to front post. This player might come to the back. Gets played in. And then we're in. And then we try to score. Then once the players get back to their start points again, okay, we will then see the same thing happen off the opposite side. So then this player will receive that ball, this player makes that third man run again, goes in to finish, and then when they come back out, they receive that one, two. After this player plays it, they look to spin off, so then that angle comes in to be able to play that ball, and then we're seeing players attacking different areas okay, of the goal to then score. Now, after the six finishes, these three players will swap over with these three players. So you'll see one, two, three, swap over, one, two, three, and then the crosses and the passes can swap over as well, okay? And then after a few goes, you can look to swap players over on each team. Now, what you can do is you could have two teams of five. So you could say one, two, three, four, five blues, one, two, three, four, five reds, okay? And then two reds can swap with two reds after a couple of goes, two blues can swap with two blues, and it can be a competition. Whichever team scores the most goals will win, okay? So nice sharp movements, nice sharp passes, okay? Composure in that final third, and then time on our movement to then attack the cross. We will now move into our first animation before moving on to part two of this week's session. Now moving into part two of this week's session, we're now moving into our first of two small-sided games. Okay, this one's going to be focusing on third man runs to score. Okay, so in terms of the setup, so the depth, okay, from the goal line here to the line to the box here is going to be between 20 and 25 yards. Okay, I'd say ideally 25, so you've got a bit more space to make the run. Then you're going to want 10 yards in here, 
and then another 20 yards in here. So let's say you're going for 55 yards, but if you make this a little bit smaller, 50 yards, and then the width, okay, is going to be between 30 and 40 yards. Start off 30, if it's a little bit too tight, make it 40. Now, how it works is the team in possession, okay, so the blues here, try to play into the green, to the floaters and then make a forward run to drive into space and score. Now, when they play into a floater, okay, and then a player makes a run, a defender is allowed to allowed to follow. The, the player can obviously carry on moving there. So when this player he make, makes a move here, this player can make a run on the far side to then receive it and go in and score. And if the Reds win the ball back in that area, they can score on that goal too. So both teams are scoring in the same goal. Now, the floaters can swap over after a set time as well. Now, we don't want this being a huge area because we're trying to focus on the players moving the ball quickly and then focus on those quick movements ahead. Okay, So they can move it around here, one and two touch, and then as this player opens out here, this player might move off, okay? And then we see that ball going into here, okay? And you get players moving into there, okay? And then what we're focusing on is, can we make runs in between the players? So then this player receives here the floater, okay? We get a player making that run into space, break the lines, and then go in and score. And then we play again from the coach. So again, the players have got to be brave to go forward, okay? Make those runs in behind and move the defenders about because the team out of possession is looking to obviously stay solid to prevent the floaters receiving the ball because they're the ones who are going to make a tick, okay? And they're the ones that they're trying to play through to then play in behind. And then what you're trying to do is draw them out. So it could be we're keeping possession, okay? Then we look to get rotations there, okay? We're bouncing in. So then one player might jump out. When that player jumps out to here, leaves the space, we play to the floater. They look to open and play. And then we get players moving in to go in and score. And like I say, at any time when the opposition win the ball back, their aim will just be the same. So if the Blues have got it in here, okay, they play forward into here, or let's say they've got the ball there and they try and play through and the Reds win it, instantly they could play to a floater, this player makes the run, they can go in and then score. Okay, so it's about staying swift on, being alert to our surroundings, okay. Time of our movement, okay, making sure that we're interchanging to make it more difficult for the opposition to track our runs, okay, and then being brave and composed in that final third. We will now move into our next animation before moving on to the final part of this week's session. Okay, now moving into the final part of this week's session, we're now moving into the second of our two small-sided games. Now, this one is going to be focusing on attacking in the final third, okay, and keeping the attack alive, okay? So you're going to split the group into two teams of five, okay? You have three players centrally, and you have two players out wide. Now, the players out wide can swap over. You just have to make sure that you have a wide player in each zone at all times. So when the players... Uh, let's say a wide player gets the ball and they look to drive into here... You have to have a player coming out into here to score before they score, okay? It's just about, obviously, it's a little condition on the game, okay? And we're trying to make sure it's not cramped in these central areas as well. Now, the wire player's got a big um, job to play as when they receive the ball, okay, they can look to obviously play defence, uh, play, play a penetrating pass, okay, look to combine, okay, they could even get one twos in here, and then they can look to obviously drive a ball across the box, and also they might get a bit of space to take somebody on to drive into that uh, central area to score. Central players for them in here, okay, it's about creating those opportunities quickly to score, so at least we can play in, we can get to set, we can drag a player out, shift out our feet and finish. So it's quick fire attacks, it's composure in that final third, okay. It's making sure that when we concede the goal, we're trying not to concede again. Okay, so if we do concede, making sure that we're not dropping our heads, okay? And then there's a goal after goal after goal going in. So in these areas here, we want to limit our touches, okay? Get it in uh, into areas to try and score quickly. So making sure that we're not just standing here. When the player's got a ball here, there's no movement ahead of the ball, okay? Can we get runners ahead of the ball? Might not even be to receive the ball, but to give the ball to somebody else who can take it into space and score. Then, when the opposition win the ball back, so Blues might get it here. This looks to press, press the player. They look to turn. They win it back. Can they look to play quickly? So there might not be an option centrally. This is where the wingers come into play. They drive in. This player looks to get out quickly there. And we drive in and score, okay? So we're not 
playing in a huge area, okay? So you're gonna go about 30 yards from goal maximum there, and then you wanna use the width of the penalty box, but cut it off, okay, either side here as well. So it's not a massive area, so it's gotta be quick, it's gotta be incisive, gotta be thinking on the spot, okay? Making sure we're aware of our surroundings, being creative and improvising in these areas, combining with each other, okay? And you can do, it could be first to five or two minutes after that we rest. You could have 10 balls or after the 10 balls are going in, whichever team has scored the most goals in that time wins, okay? Make it competitive for the players and then try and get in in those right areas in terms of with the players. The main thing you want to be kind of going in with your coaching points is on the movements, making sure we're getting movements ahead of the ball, okay? Making sure we're being alert, okay? And then being confident in that final third. We will now move into our final animation before concluding this week's session. Thanks for watching this week's video. Don't forget to head over to our website where you can sign up to view over 900 session plans like this. And we'll see you next week for another Session Sunday.